this why I could tell you stories I could tell you stories you'd swear the hand of God had control of your very sphincter retainer of this great mysteries and uncorked sweet effluvia the remembrance of things past well eaten at any rate I could still feel the weight of his shoe on the back of my neck where it had been the night before. <clears throat> Wrote this one after I looked in the mirror one day. <laughs> Matted hair rolled across his head like the waves of a polluted sea. <laughs> that was before my self, uh, my self-image training. Okay. The squeaking of rising gates resolved to thunderous crashes, waking birds and bums, babies and bankers, ball players, bartenders. The smell of freshly baked bread mingles with automotive exhaust, month-old garbage and dried blood. As a wooden billy club jars a traveler awake, as a heart beats under a lover's hand, as drool runs down a satin pillow. In early morning, in the striated shade of a leafless tree, over dew-covered patches of grass, a young woman practices Tai Chi Chuan under the vacant stare of a man stretched across a small couch, damp with sweat, in a small studio apartment, fingers wrapped around a sore, limp cock. The rising sun dispels his pale reflection on the window glass. And in a crowded neighborhood bar, through the smoky haze and the heat, amidst the clashing of glasses, the shuffling of feet, the buzzing of voices, two strangers meet. And under a cloudless sky, under cover of darkness, under a wooden bridge, underneath faded jeans and soiled panties, a woman moans while calloused fingers probe the banks of a dry riverbed. Wow. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Thank you. Anna His uncle is a Roman senator. Soon enough will he know many afternoons of vacant pleasures in the baths. The warm mouth and vacant expression of a Nubian slave girl as she descends on his stiffening cock. He imagines pulling her hair till she cries or perhaps bites, after which, with the blade of his sword, separates the girl's head from her body, still impaled on his cock, and parade around the pool, standing still, eyes closed, ejaculating into the girl's mouth, holding the head close to his body, warm blood oozing down his thighs, fingers hopelessly tangled in shiny, oiled, nappy hair. <laughs> By the, time, by the time I was 15, talking about my father, he had pretty much ceased to acknowledge me altogether. And those few times he did, referred to me as the mistake made flesh, or the irritating presence, and once, Teddy Roosevelt's revenge. <laughs> no idea what that means. I felt kind of like Bobby Rydell waking up from a bad dream in which he was awakened in the middle of the night by the screams of a teenage girl with a giant beehive hairdo riding atop a horse through town yelling, the British are coming, the British are coming, and pointing in the direction of the shore. He could see thousands of British soldiers embarking off of giant seaplanes aimed not with guns but with guitars and drums. Young, small mouths painted bright red following the troops making mewing and slurping noises. The soldiers set up their equipment on the beach and started to play music. Girls fainted. Time had come and gone. Bobby Rydell. That's it. You have 15 seconds. Uh, one minute? 15 seconds. 15 seconds. 15 seconds, okay. Okay, well, the only jism I'm interested in these days the only ism I'm interested in these days is jism. Thank you.